Hello everyone, I'm Bahman. Uh, I'll talk about the scalable KMIS++. Uh, so KMIS clustering is uh, one of the most fundamental problems in uh, machine learning and data analysis. And it's, been, it's the most uh, popular clustering algorithm in uh, using practice. And uh, it's been rated as one of the top 10 algorithms in data mining. The problem that we will talk about is is designing a scalable algorithm for KMIS clustering, which has uh, strong theoretical guarantees and also a good practical performance. Given the importance of KMIS clustering, you would imagine that such an algorithm should have been known for a long time by now. But surprisingly, it actually turns out that that's not the case. So what is KMIS clustering? Uh, the problem is as follows. You are given a set of data points, uh, n data points, like x, uh, x1 through xn. You're also given a number of clusters, k. And then for a set of uh, cluster centers, uh, C, uh, which is like C1 uh, through CK, you define the cost of clustering as follows. For each data point, uh, you find the uh, closest center in the set of centers that you have. You compute the distance from the data point to that center. You square this distance, and then you sum up all of these distances squared values. And that's the cost of your clustering. And the goal of the problem is to find the set of centers uh, such that uh, this cost is minimized. Um, so that's the problem. So this is an example, like given the data set on the left-hand side, uh, and let's say case four, you would like to find those four clusters on the right-hand side. Uh, so you would basically want to uh, find k tightly tied uh, clusters in the data set. The most uh, widely used algorithm for KMIS clustering is this algorithm uh, known as uh, Lloyd algorithm. So the way it works is that it starts with K centers, K uh, arbitrarily chosen centers. Usually it's uh, initialized uh, uniformly at random from the set of data points. And then after the initialization, you do an expectation maximization type uh, local search uh, until, you, uh, until your clustering converges. So given the set of centers, you find the clusters. Given the clusters, you find the centers, and uh, you continue. So we will not actually care about the, uh, the local search part. We will focus on the initialization part. But this algorithm is actually pretty simple, and it's scalable. Uh, so what is wrong with it? What is wrong with it is that, first of all, it takes a lot of iterations to converge. And uh, when, uh, when the data is large, that means that it takes a long time, uh, possibly even it's not uh, feasible to run. Uh, but even that is not the biggest problem with Lloyd. The bigger problem is that it's a uh, local search procedure. So it's very sensitive to its uh, initialization. And the random initialization can very easily uh, get two centers in the same cluster, in which case Lloyd gets stuck in a local optimum. And then it just gives a bad cluster. And this is, so because of this, Lloyd actually has no theoretical guarantee on its quality. And in practice, also, it works very poorly. So it gives very bad clusters. So this is an example of uh, how this happens. You have this data set. It has four very clean uh, clusters, very well-defined clusters. You, uh, in the beginning, you initialize. You pick four random uh, centers. It's, very li it's quite likely that you get like two uh, centers here on that cluster. Um, and in that case, so after this initia initialization, you start to do your uh, local search. So you find two clusters over there. You move little, uh, the centers a little bit around. You, find these, you think that these two clusters are the same, are one cluster. And already at this point, local search is stuck. And there is no way that it's going to figure out that these are two clusters, and that's actually one cluster. So this is bad. So to solve exactly this problem, this issue, uh, one of actually my ex-office mates, David Arthur, uh, proposed this algorithm uh, known as KMIS++. Uh, and the way it works is that it tries to spread out the centers. So it's an initialization algorithm for uh, k-means. And it tries to spread out the centers. And the way it does it is that it is an iterative procedure to initialize the algorithm. It has k iterations. And per iteration, it chooses one new center. So it picks the first center uniformly at random from the set of data points. And then after that, in the ith iteration, it has already chosen uh, the first i minus 1 center. So it's choosing the, it wants to pick the ith center. What it does is that it goes through the set of data points. It computes for, uh, for each point. It computes its distance to the set of currently chosen uh, centers. Uh, so that's like d for point x0. It's uh, dx0 and uh, c. And then it forms this distribution, dx0 c squared over fix of c. Uh, so it's a joint distribution over the set of data points uh, where each uh, point, uh, the probability of choosing each point is proportional to, uh, to its distance squared, which is the contribution of that point to the 
care and cost of the clustering, if you just use those uh, centers which have been already chosen. And then it picks one center, uh, one point from this distribution, from this joint distribution, it picks one center. And that's the highest center. And it continues uh, uh, till it chooses k centers. And uh, so David had told you that actually this, right after initialization, this already gives an order log k uh, uh, approximation to the optimum k means clustering. Uh, it's like 8 log k, the constant is not bad. Uh, and it actually works uh, well. So let's see a quick example of this. So you have the same data set that we just saw. Uh, you pick the first center uniformly at random, and then you compute the distance the squares uh, to that point over there, to the center. Uh, so, and you pick a point with probability proportional to distance squared, maybe this guy, which is far from that. And then you compute the distance the squares from these two points, and then you sample another center, maybe that one, and then you do it again. And maybe you get this one. At this point, the initialization is done. And uh, if you want, you can run. Uh, you can run Lloyd after this with this initial, uh, initialization. So as I say, it's a good algorithm. It's a simple algorithm, uh, and it gives a good guarantee. So what is wrong with this? The, what is wrong with it is that it needs k passes over the data. And when the, in applications where data is large, it is very typical that the, not only the data is massive, but also the number of clusters is large. So I don't know, let's say you have a website, you have millions of users, you want to cluster your users, you want to show a different content to each uh, uh, cluster. So in that case, you can imagine that the number of clusters will also, can also be pretty large. So k can easily be like in a few hundreds or, or thousands or something like that. And in that case, it means that just to run the initialization, you would have to need like do 1,000 passes over the data. Or if you are doing this uh, on top of MapReduce, which was actually our main motivation because like the data systems uh, they were dealing with were so large that we couldn't do it use, uh, unless using MapReduce. This translates to 1,000 iterations of MapReduce. And you have uh, worked with Hadoop, you know that. I mean, that's just like too much. You can just not do it. So this doesn't scale. So there's a problem. Um, so how do we solve this problem? So here's the intuition for the solution. So k means plus plus samples one point per iteration. So at each iteration, it samples one point. So here's the main uh, like idea. What if we oversample? So the way k means plus plus works is that after it chooses the first center, it has a distribution uh, which over the set of data points. And then it picks one uh, point from, the, uh, it chooses one point from that joint distribution. And then it updates its distribution. And then it picks one more point, and it updates its distribution, and it picks one more point, and so on. So now, we want to oversample. So there are two points in the second item over there. There are two points here. We want to oversample in, uh, with two differences. One is that, first of all, we want to pick each point independently. So we don't choose points from a joint distribution. We pick each point independently. This is actually pretty useful for a distributed implementation, because each point can independently decide if it should be in the set of centers or not. Uh, and then we pick each point with a larger probability than k means plus plus chooses it. So this intuitively corresponds to updating your distribution much more infrequently, uh, which is a much coarser sampling. So the way it works is that you have a uh, distribution, you pick a lot of points from it, and then uh, you update your distribution. And then you have this distribution, you pick a lot of points from it, and then you update your distribution. So it's a much coarser sampling. So it's not even clear if this works. but it turns out that it's actually sufficient, and it leads to this algorithm called, uh, called k parallel. Um, so before I describe the algorithm, I give an example. So let's say, again, we have this uh, data set that we are familiar with. So k is 4. Uh, we have an oversampling factor. Let's say in this case is 3. So in the beginning, we do whatever. Like we pick one point, let's say uniformly at random. And then after that, we compute the distance squares, but we don't uh, choose one uh, new center. We pick three new centers, so maybe these ones, OK? So we compute the distance square to that one, and we pick three ones. So maybe we get two here, one over there. And then we compute the distance squares to a set of these centers. And then we pick three more points. So maybe we get two here, and then one there. So, and at this point, the initialization is actually done. If you want to insist on having exactly k centers, you can re-cluster the set of these intermediate centers and get k uh, centers. Uh, this example actually doesn't uh, show the full power of K-means parallel because the number of uh, clusters is very small, but it shows how it works. Uh, so this is how the algorithm works. So you ha the algorithm has the oversampling factor called L. You should think of L as being order K, like theta K. It's like K, half K, 2K. You'll see why. Uh, and then what it does is at first it initializes a set C of intermediate centers uh, arbitrarily. Like you can pick one random point, K random points, whatever you want. 
And then for a number of iterations, R, that we will see where it should be, uh, it does this, uh, it, it does these uh, two steps. So given the current set C, you compute the distances from, the distance from each point to a set of currently chosen uh, centers. So that's D squared X and C. And then you pick the point X. Remember that uh, capital X was a set of data points. So you pick the uh, point little x with this probability, L times D squared XC over the cost. So first of all, you are picking each point independently. And then you are picking each point with L times higher probability than K means plus plus uh, chooses it. So in expectation in each round, and then when you choose these uh, points, you just add them to C. So this updates C. So then you go up, and then you do this iteration again using the new C. Uh, so in expectation, in each round, we pick L points. So we are picking uh, a lot more points. And then at the end, uh, if you want to have exactly K centers, you can uh, recluster the set of intermediate points to get uh, K centers. So another way to intuitively think about K means parallel is this. So we had the number of rounds R. If R is 0, uh, the algorithm doesn't do any smart choices, like uh, choices of uh, centers. It doesn't choose the centers in any smart ways. Like not, it's not doing any of, oops, it's not doing any of these iterations. It's just that. It's just arbitrary. So at that point, it's actually it's just Lloyd. And it has no guarantees. Uh, if R is k, let's say our sampling factor is 1, then at, e so it's very, at that point, it's very closely simulating k means plus plus. Even at that point, it's not exactly k means plus plus because it's picking each point independently. But it's picking each point, uh, like at each round, it's picking one point in expectation. Um, so it's very close to k means plus plus. And at that point, we know that uh, we have strong guarantees from k means plus plus. Uh, but as I said, like you should imagine. So this is a spectrum. Here is r equal to zero. Here is r equal to like 1,000. And what we want to do with k-means parallel is that we want to run it using a very small number of rounds. So let's say five. So that's actually what we did in our experiments. So on this spectrum, we're actually much closer to Lloyd than to k-means plus plus. So then it's not even clear that uh, does this algorithm can it, can it possibly have any guarantees on anything? And it surprisingly turns out that the answer is yes. And this is the main theorem about k-means parallel. So if you look at any of the rounds in the iterations that I uh, show, so let's call phi the cost of the clustering that you have uh, with the centers that you have chosen up to that round, bef just before that round. So that's phi. And then phi prime is uh, the cost of the clustering at the end of that round. So you have the centers that you had chosen before. You have you chose some uh, new centers in this round, and you get a new clustering. That, uh, the cost of that clustering is phi prime. And then opt, let's say, is the cost of the optimum clustering. Then what we show is that. Uh, phi prime in expectation is less than some constant times opt uh, plus k over el times phi. And this is why I said like l should be around k. So in that case, what is happening here is that in each step, uh, k means parallel is basically taking away a constant fraction of the cost of the current clustering and is replacing it with a constant factor times opt. So if the cost of the initial clustering is psi, uh, after order log psi over opt iterations, this is r. After this many iterations, uh, k-means parallel gives you a constant factor approximation to opt. And so if uh, the cost of initial clustering is even orders of magnitude worse than opt, still k-means uh, parallel needs a small number of iterations. And if for the last step, like the reclustering step, where we recluster the uh, set of intermediate centers, if for that step you use something like k-means plus plus, then the overall approximation factor that you get compared to opt is order log k. So it has a good guarantee. I will not go through the uh, proof of this theorem, but if you are theoretically inclined, uh, I would highly encourage you to go and look at the proof. It's actually pretty neat. And instead of doing the proof, I'll show you some experimental results. So the, first of all, about quality. So k means plus plus uh, significant, uh, significantly improves the quality of clustering uh, compared to the random initialization. Uh, and then what we saw in our experiments was that k means parallel actually does a better job. It improves the cost of the clustering even further than k means plus plus. And that's the first point uh, to see like here and here. Uh, and the second point to see here is that uh, k means plus plus actually, if you initialize and then you run some Lloyd iterations, it actually benefits quite a bit from uh, the Lloyd iterations. But k means parallel, it doesn't benefit much from the Lloyd iterations. So this is saying that pretty much after you, are, uh, you have done the uh, k means uh, parallel initialization, you're pretty much done. You don't need to do anything else. Um, and what is the intuitive reason for this? Like, what's happening here? The, what's happening here is that uh, the way that k means plus plus is choosing its centers is proportional with probability proportional to d squared x, uh, uh, to the d squared, which is the, and the distance from the point to the set of centers. 
So if k is large, if the number of data uh, point, it's, it's the number of clusters is large, let's say you have some outliers. So the outliers are going to have a, a, a high probability of getting chosen in each step. And if k is large, you are giving these outliers a lot of chances uh, to get chosen as one of your centers. So there is a good chance that k is plus plus at some point it will pick uh, an outlier. And if it picks an outlier, it's going to miss a cluster. So it's going to hurt it at the end. But came is parallel because it's doing um, oversampling. Even if at some point like, it picks like one or two uh, uh, outliers, it's going to pick a bunch of good points as well. So it's much harder to get KMIS parallel confused with outliers than it's with KMIS plus plus. And in terms of convergence, one of the nice properties of KMIS plus plus is that if you want to run uh, Lloyd iterations after KMIS plus plus, it actually reduces the number of Lloyd iterations that you need to converge uh, significantly compared to the random initialization. And what we saw in our, observation, in our uh, experiments was that KMIS parallel actually does that even better than KMIS plus plus. So that's the second thing. And the last thing, so with some, uh, so uh, one point that I want to mention, the main point in this slide that you should remember is that K-means parallel is very judicious in choosing a set of intermediate centers. So um, we compared like three algorithms on top of Hadoop. Uh, so random K-means parallel and this other algorithm partition, which is based on, a, based on a rather old streaming algorithm by Rajiv and some of his students at the time. Uh, so the way it works is that it partitions the data set to a bunch of uh, smaller sets. For each, uh, it clusters each set, finds a set of uh, these uh, cluster centers, and then it clusters uh, this set, uh, reclusters that set. Uh, so uh, well, the quality of both of these algorithms is much better than uh, random, uh, but if you look at the time, uh, well, partition is very slow, random is slow, k parallel is significantly faster. What's the reason for that? The reason is in this uh, column in the middle. So k parallel chooses a much smaller number of intermediate centers than partition. Uh, and this directly translates to speed because, uh, because of the like, distance computations that you have to do and so on. So the improvement that you see here is directly explained by this difference. And actually, in our experiments, we observed that uh, K-means parallel, compared to K-means plus plus, uh, K-means parallel like, gets a clustering which is as good uh, or even better than K-means plus plus as soon as it chooses around K points. So it's very uh, like, smart in choosing a set of intermediate centers. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, last point. And then one. Uh, Last point that I want to make is, is that the algorithmic theme that uh, uh, we had in this algorithm is as follows. So if you have this, uh, so if you have a large data set, let's say you want to run the, the data set is large, so you want to run it in a, you want to run some algorithm in a distributed fashion. So what you should keep in mind, I mean, one of the techniques that you should keep in mind is that you would like to very quickly decrease the set of uh, the size of the data set that you have. Uh, and you want to do this in a way that uh, you maintain the features of the data set that matter to your solution. So if you do this, then you get a much smaller instance of the problem, and you can solve that small instance in a single machine. So in KMIS parallel, this, the way this is happening is that in a distributed fashion, very quickly from the huge set of the uh, data set that we have, uh, very quickly we pick this small, uh, very small set of uh, intermediate centers. So this is done quickly in a distributed fashion. And then we get a very small, uh, instance of clustering, which is like clustering the same intermediate centers, and you can do it on a single machine. So this is the theme. This theme is actually uh, uh, very useful. Like in a, I at least like use it in uh, some other applications as for some other algorithms as well. So it's a pretty useful technique. Uh, you should keep it, in mind, keep it in mind. So with this, actually, I uh, finished my presentation. Oh, okay, so the question was, uh, you're picking a larger number of, the number of intermediate centers that you choose, is it bigger than K? Then the answer is yes, because uh, the number of intermediate centers that you choose is LR. L is around R, uh, and this is what I was saying. So we observed that as soon as LR, which is the expected number of uh, centers that you choose, is around K, uh, it's, I mean, maybe like 2K, something like that, not, not much bigger, then already at that point, KMIS parallel does a better clustering than uh, KMIS++. But yeah, the number of intermediate centers here yeah, is definitely bigger than K.